Hello traders, John of StockBookie.com. Today we're looking at the SPY, the IWM, the Qs, the DIA, the IYT, the USO, the UUP, and the GLD. We follow the daily, weekly, monthly time frames. We use technical analysis here at StockBookie.com. All right, so let's get right to the daily SPY. 56 million on the day, no volume again. It's the no participation markets, guys. All the indexes have pretty much the same uh, pattern here. The big red bar on the sell day on that Monday, a little bit of a retrace back up into the highs, in some cases to the highs, other cases just a nice retrace back into this area here of uh, resistance. But honestly, this is starting to chop around in a little bit of a bullish pattern now, even though we're inside this bar, going sideways in a bearish manner, still slightly bullish above the moving averages. Now it's kind of chopping in a bullish, micro bullish that is. But let's see if this plays out. Still needs to get above the 20 MA, big red bar, gap fill, all-time high 240.32. It could get above there. Then I'm looking at 242 <clears throat> and 252.44, 250 area if it gets through the uh, resistance at this point on the charts. We are setting up to go into Friday's jobs report. So maybe that's the day they push it up or gap it up or what have you. Again, if we keep having volume like this, 56, 66, 46, anything in this range, anything's possible. But the big one for that, guys, light volume. Stocks like Amazon can keep going. Apple can keep going. Tesla can keep going because there's no conviction either way. Institutional money will pile in there and make it go which way, whichever way they want to pay out option premiums in their favor. They need it to go down. They'll make everything go down in their favor. So just remember that light volume markets, stocks can easily be moved up and down or wherever they need to go for these big players to pay out the least amount of premium to the retail trader. But for them, they need higher prices, they'll make it go higher. Believe me, light volume markets, guys, just um, interesting stuff going on here in the last six, seven months. IWM, same thing, big inside bar, retraces up to the high. Gets above these areas, though, which was pretty good. I mean, it was like, wow, this thing's actually going to push. If you are bullish, you need to get above this pivot point, 138.73. Then you need to get above the all-time high, which is 140.86. If you could get above there, then maybe 145 to 150. Still needs to get into this area, close and confirm, and then possible higher prices. And I want to see more volume. I want to see a big push up on volume. We don't get that. Maybe just a slow grind again, going in the jobs report on Friday. I think there's some more lip service tomorrow with the Fed and some other stuff. So we'll see how that plays out. Again, we did close below the MAs. We did close below here today as well. Little doji. Again, we are chopping around sideways. Slight bullish manner here too. I'd like to stay in this range here. Get back above if you're more bullish. If you're bearish. You got to just uh, wait for pattern. Let's see if we go sideways into the trend line here. Just through price here, so it's not significant really anymore, but it's still an area saying, hey, it needs to get above it. We are back below. If this thing starts breaking down, you need to come here first, 132.40, and then I think we'll break down to the 128.04 area and then see how it responds with that. We still have a gap fill down here, gap fill down here, and then ultimately the big one down here around 115.75. Again, nothing wrong with this. We are back below the moving averages, so you have to keep an eye on that. And I uh, got to respect it, though, still in a slight uh, uh, bullish stance. Again, we need to pop back above these and continue going. If we're having trouble here, we're waiting for the next pattern for the setup to see where this thing's possibly going. Let's look at the uh, Qs. Q, same thing. Boom, we tried to close it. They did get it above this high little pivot on the close, only by six cents. Let's see if it can continue up now. We do have a slight bullish pattern starting to consolidate right here. So I can't rule it out, guys. We're still back above the uh, moving averages on the Qs. Nothing wrong. The only problem is light, light volume. And, it, you know, and not that that is the problem for the bulls, for the bears it more is. The light volume could keep these markets floating, so keep an eye on that. Again, I want to close up here in the 133 to 134.35 area. We could close up there and then get some follow through. Maybe 140, maybe a little higher. But again, one day at a time with these guys. Right now, really not telling us much than a little consolidation sideways here, setting up in a bullish manner. But uh, again, we got to see and wait to see if it could pop above here, close, and then close again with some follow through. That's what we're looking for. On the DIA, same thing. 
down. This is the only one that really didn't retrace. So this one's a little bit weaker. And it's because the Goldman Sachs, the JPMs, they're just not going anywhere. A couple of the other big players are stalling out on high-flying charts. So let's see if this can consolidate a little bit more. Still, still bullish because we're above the 50 and the 200 MA, but it's slightly bearish coming off this inside bar, but holding the 382 retrace. So let's see. Right now, it's kind of a 50-50 shot. If you're bullish, you need to get above the trend line. Let's make that a little bit longer. You need to get above this trend line. Once you get above that, then you'll uh, start going, you know, you got to get above the big red bar, this little pivot, and then the all-time high at 20, uh, 211.59. We get above that. We showed this area yesterday. We could go, you know, maybe shoot up, go to this uh, 215, 216 16 area. Kind of like the NVIDIA, guys. That big uh, bullish pattern failed. So NVIDIA is starting to roll over, but it's still NVIDIA. But like this one here, if this uh, bearish pattern fails, this one's pretty good other than that little dip and then right back up. So, yeah, I guess you can make a case it's micro bullish too. But overall, it's still inside this bar. Let's see what happens in the next couple of days and see how this thing plays out. Again, going into Friday with the news, anything's possible with these markets, guys. Um, if you're bearish on this one, you need to get below this pivot, get below the 50 MA, this trend line, then I still think we're coming to 191.40. And if it starts to break down the markets, you know, you got some gaps to fill down here. But you know what? Let it get down here first, and we'll figure out where it's going to go. So we'll have some gaps to fill on the way down here. But again, setting up pretty good for some downside. If this pattern fails and you're looking it up, you still have some resistance. You know, I'm going to put this bar in there. Still have some resistance right there. And then as well as the high pivot right after it. And then uh, a couple other things too. But you know what? Again, nothing wrong with these charts, guys. Still above the 50 and the 200 down here, and uh, just consolidating in a choppy manner, and uh, let let the markets tell us what we're going to do with this. So we are short the indexes right now. So I'm hoping downside, but again, I wouldn't rule out some more upside on the non-volume market participation. Again, we are not loaded. We are in share positions. We have no more than five percent of our total portfolio in any position at this point, and if we go full positions, they will be at 10 percent. We're going to slowly start adding these as we go so we don't get killed. We have plenty of time on these, and a lot of them are high flyers. That's why we're picking on these types of stocks so or indexes or ETFs or whatever it might be. Money management is critical in these markets, guys. you got to stick with that and go with it. IYT, same thing. Talked about this. Nice little drop. This one was lagging. IYT lags or the transports lags, never good for the market. We come right back into the trend line. Chopping around, honestly, bullish manner, not bad. But inside this bar in a bearish manner. So micro bull for the upside, macro bear for the possible downside. For me in this trade, ah, you know what? We took it when it retraced back up into this area. And uh, we're going to stick with this one. I, I still think we're in a cycle where this thing can pull back. Our entry point was 164.64. So we're still in the money a little bit. But again, we are setting up to go higher. We are in a small position. We just started adding. We have plenty of room to add if it gets here. And I'll add more at double top if I have to. We have wide stops on these. If you have a 2.5% position of your total portfolio, you can have a $30 stop out and still be okay. Not, not that we're going to stop out with 30 bucks, but... You know, it still gives me time to add here and possibly a double top. We'll get our average price around 168 or so. If that happens, then we'll hold and let this thing play out. <clears throat> That's how I would play this one out. But right now, holding strong, trying to get back above the moving averages. If you're bullish, you need to get above the trend line, above the 50 MA, above this pivot, and then possibly shoot for the 173.88. If you do make it through there and close, then you're looking at 175 to 180 area. But again, we'll see how this thing sets up. If this if this thing keeps going sideways, then it could get a little more um, of a push up. Then you got to watch for volume too. As you can see, we had pretty good volume yesterday. Then it dried right back up. So again, a little bit bullish, but still think on the retrace, we have some room to go down. If it does go down, you're looking at double bottom. Then the 200 moving average. And again, like all the other ones, you got some gaps to fill down in here and stuff like that. But one day at a time, still have to get down here, get through there, or get above the moving averages. Then we come up here and we start adding more shorts as it goes up. That's how we're rolling right now. Uh, the USO, though, this one's had a mind of its own, guys, but it did. It filled, filled the gap here, filled the gap here, filled the gap here. I thought for sure we'd go down in this area. We did not. It caught a bid. They were talking about some pipeline or something here, and 
and I don't even know, OPEC's cutting more production, blah, 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 so then it caught a little bid, but at least the talking heads are upgrading this thing down in here instead of up here like they did back in there, and then a chop, 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 chop. We were bull, we were on this bearish setup, bombed. We covered most of our positions in oil. We have quarters in the SCO and a quarter in the USO. We're still in the money, so still fine. I want to see once it reacts to this, see how it goes through. If it just pops through, will it go to gap fill and gap fill? Maybe. If it does come up into this area around 1140, we will be adding shorts again. 1160 would be even better. 12 would be even better. But again, one day at a time, consolidated a couple days. Now it's popping up. Let's see if this thing just stays around here. Does this pattern fail, come right back in, or do we push through and get uh, you know, back to the highs over here? I mean, who knows right now? Again, we're short. We took most of it off. We're still in the money, so we're just going to play this thing out and see what happens. UUP, which is the dollar. Um, it was three cents up on the day, no great shakes. Got a great bounce off this gap fill. Almost hit the 200 moving average. You know a lot of technicians were waiting down there, so they stopped it short, pushed it up. Try to get people to chase. They get people to chase, get people to cover. This thing will pop up, no problem. Still running into some resistance here. Let's see if we get some more consolidation after filling the gap. Going to need more sideways for this thing to continue up. If it does, you're going to have big resistance here around 26.25. Then ultimately double top in this area around 26.51 and so, so on and so forth. So again, just wait and see what the pattern gives us. Will it pop up through the moving averages? Will it confirm above here on the daily? Again, we'll look on Friday for the weekly close. But right now, nothing wrong. Got a nice little bounce, stalling out a little bit. Let's see if it's setting up for higher prices. The GLD. GLD, again, um, up 27 cents. Not a great, you know, it was okay. It was up. You know, you got to respect it. But again, retrace right back up into this big area of resistance. Now we're in chopping around up and down here in a bullish manner above the MAs here. Still not above the 200. The more we chop around here, the more it's possibility of this thing setting up to go higher. If this pattern fails, we'll probably come right back down to double bottom down in here. No problem. We're in this trade around 110, so we're still in the driver's seat on this one. We started adding at 115, <clears throat> uh, 10, I think it was 111, then 108. We loaded, you know, we did a we did a little bit more down there, and then our average price at 110.57, I believe it is. So again, chopping around, you know, up and down here. Let's see if this thing's setting up to go higher, you know. And then the JNUG, still getting uh, emails on that. JNUG's okay. Looks like we got, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Are we right on top of the 20? All right, so we are on top of the 20 now. Yeah, so nice close today. I like the fact that it almost closed above this bar here when it broke down, came back around. So that's telling me possible higher prices. Gold still has to go for this one to move up. But again, guys, this is the big point here. We have a trend line down here. This is great support. If we start cracking that support, then you better get ready, You know, especially if you bought up here somewhere. If you bought down here, you're still okay. But we got up, bullish consolidation here on this inside bar but still overall bearish. So this, this could move up, or this could just chop, 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 and come right back in. If we crack through this area, the 525 area right in there, double bottom, I think this one's going to 431, and then 383. So be really careful. Don't load the house on this one, guys. Slow and steady, kind of like the SEO trade. You know, if you get, if you get a couple bucks on it, pull it and be done with it. But honestly, this thing gets up, you know, starts to go. You, know, you got to get above this pivot here at 809, then through the 50 MA, and then you got this uh, trend line to contend with, and then we'll see how that reacts once it gets there, if it gets there. So, you know, you have the 618, the 750, you got the big breakdown area, 1170. I mean, honestly, this, this thing could shoot up, but a lot of resistance, a lot of support. Right now, just waiting for pattern. This one looks a little bit bullish to me, overall bearish, so it really could go anyways. Let's try to see if we can get some direction in this one tomorrow. And uh, throughout the week, remember, I think Yellen has some lip service tomorrow. So this could be a trade where it tanks because gold's going down. Or this one could be taken off because they're more on the hawkish side doing that. So just keep an eye on this stuff, guys. All right. Um, that's about it. Go to my site. Sign up for my stockbookie.com. Uh, free membership. It's going to be free, guys, for a while. So, well, maybe unless I get some more people trolling me and talking crap, then I might have to stop it up and just charge maybe 10 bucks a month just to keep those people out. Again, go to stockbookie.com. Sign up for the free membership. Enjoy videos like this, live streams, and all that good stuff. All right, guys. Thanks for watching my videos.
God bless. See you on the charts.